So what I'm going to present uh, with uh, Papia and Ardra Surendran, who is not here, she's based at the Indian Institute of Technology in Hyderabad, is a small um, cross-state comparison of the pandemic response in Kerala and Delhi and situate this also within the kind of multi-level framework because obviously what the states can do in India is also constrained by the broader federal multi-level framework in which they operate. So in some sense, this is, and now I'll try to move. Mm. Yeah, this is a, a small example of an emerging kind of field in the literature which talks about the subnational comparative method that is cross-state comparisons, but also uh, comparing how states fit within a kind of multi-level framework. This literature is quite strong in the United States, in Latin America, Brazil, Argentina, but we see also increasingly interstate comparisons emerge in India, and I'm thinking here particularly of some of the pioneering work by authors like Atul Kohli on welfare, and more recently by Kailash, Louis Tillin, and others on comparative state welfare policy in India. Um, I will say a little bit about the conditions that inhibit and facilitate the scope for policy divergence in India in terms of the management of COVID-19. A bit about the case selections, the limitations thereof, and also the limitations in our methods and emphasize that is still work in progress. And then I'll pass on to uh, Papia, who then will present the empirical analysis based on the data that we have already uh, with us from uh, Kerala and from Delhi. And then I'll come back for the conclusion at the very end. So, Policy divergence, if you like, is the logical consequence of autonomy or self-rule in a federal system. If you actually enable states to do certain things on their own, then you would normally expect that uh, different policies emerge across the states reflecting different political preferences or also different needs that may arise at the local level and which uh, state policy can tailor to. This is one of the benefits of a multi-level of a federal framework. Policy convergence, in a way, is then, in a way, the opposite. It's kind of uh, the convergence towards a more coordinated or indeed possibly uniform policy. But the policy convergence is often the result of a policy transfer, and that transfer can be that one state copies the policies of another state, or indeed the federal states adopt policies from the state level. But transfer can also not just be voluntary, it could be coercive. Uh, it could be, in fact, the central level imposing a certain kind of policy framework that the states then have to adapt in a way. So. Um, and we'll come back to that in the analysis. In terms of the case studies for our presentation, I have to say this is part of a broader, uh, relatively small British Academy Global Challenges grant in which one of the cases is not in India, but actually is Sri Lanka. So we don't present that here. And for monetary limitations, we were actually constrained to only look at two cases. If we had the money, we would have wanted definitely to do four or five in India, but we chose uh, Kerala and Delhi only. Uh, now, these two cases, Kerala is a full-fledged state, but Delhi, as you know, is a union territory, and this will matter to the response when we discuss it. Secondly, as already was mentioned, Kerala has a strong legacy of strong local government, civil society activism, participatory government, and also in partially as a result of dealing with uh, recent floods, uh, the Nupa virus, but also as part of a stronger social welfare tradition, has a relatively developed health, in health infrastructure as well as educational infrastructure. So in comparison, although there are states that are much higher growth states, uh, Gujarat was mentioned yesterday, or Delhi would fall in that category as well, actually Kerala is stronger in terms of its social redistribution, welfare and health infrastructure. And then the other important component to mention is that the party politics is different. 
in Kerala, the dominating parties, the Communist Party, which leads the left front, and the Congress Party uh, are actually the dominant players and the, the, the Congress-led front, with the BGP only playing a marginal role in the politics of the state. Whereas in, Dela, we, in Delhi, sorry, we have fierce competition between the Am Admi Party and the Bharatiya Janata Party, with the BGP at the moment controlling all the MPs from the Union Territory, and until very recently, but not since we know that results have been announced today, uh, the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, whereas the Am Admi Party is uh, in control of the Union Territory Legislative Assembly as well as the Cabinet and Chief Minister here at the level of the uh, Assembly. So, there are a few assumptions that we actually want to look at in this uh, analysis for today. First of all, uh, the pandemic has touched upon many competence areas in the Indian federal system. And if we look at the schedules, the state list, the center list, the concurrent list, then some of these competence areas are actually in the, and maybe I can jump to the next slide, yeah. Some of these are in the concurrent list, like a lot of the social security, social insurance uh, policies, unemployment. Some of them are exclusively dealt with by the center, interstate migration or also interstate quarantine. But a lot of the important policies are actually under the state list, like for instance, police, public health and sanitation. Now we will focus on evidence from the areas that are highlighted in yellow here. The broader project actually deals with also some of the other areas which we are not going to touch upon in the context of the presentation. So one of the expectations would be that the more autonomous you are under the constitution in a particular area, the more you should be able to exercise that autonomy. That would be a logical uh, expectation. But of course, since the pandemic touches so strongly on health, uh, we will see that that does necessarily uh, uh, is, is the case in practice. The second assumption is that uh, we would expect given the intensity of the pandemic at certain point, particularly during the first and the second wave, and then the kind of unlocking which has followed in between. I'll speak a bit closer to the mic if you have difficulties uh, understanding me. Uh, that the, uh, the center-state relations or the, the level of central involvement is not going to be continuous throughout the life cycle of the pandemic. And I would say one of the benefits of looking at this now in comparison with these studies that were mentioned earlier is that they were published quite early on. They actually looked primarily at what happened during the first wave and the aftermath. The benefit is now that we all also can take into cooperation the second wave, the vaccination rollout, so that we have a broader view, more longitudinal view over the um, course of the pandemic. And then the third assumption is more about variations between the state in terms of the center-state interactions, where we think that the capacity for subnational autonomy is higher in the case of Kerala. That's not only reflecting the fact that Kerala is a state and Delhi is a union territory, but it's also a reflection of the different party political dynamics, with the BGP being in direct competition with the Am Admi Party here in Delhi, in comparison with Kerala, where, uh, as I already mentioned, the uh, party competition is entirely different and the BGP is a marginal player. So on that note, I'll hand over now to uh, Papia, who is going to present the evidence from the cases. Thank you, Wilfred, and thanks to the chair. And okay, so I'll straight away go uh, to uh, what we have done, as uh, Wilfred said, we have, this is a case study of two cases, Delhi and Kerala. Uh, of course, much different because one is a full-fledged state under the constitution, the other is the government of the national capital territory of Delhi. Uh, now, um, can you just change, uh, okay, here it is. So the first uh, COVID-19 case in Delhi was reported on the 2nd of March, 2020. And uh, you know, 
this was a bit earlier before you know much before the national lockdown came up and uh, kejriwal government that is you know the chief minister of delhi declared an epidemic in delhi and he actually said that all public places including government and private offices as well as shopping malls need to be disinfected this was a report on the 12th of march and on that very day he also requested the central government to declare you know what has already he has already had his own vision about it but he said that you know the central government must declare covid-19 as a pandemic and stop all air traffic coming into delhi so uh, the delhi you know the way the delhi government uh, managed the covid-19 delhi followed a model of uh, testing and home quarantine and uh, it was internationally recognized by the korean government and also by the united nations but this was of course a very short lived thing because this we are talking about uh, you know the months very very you know the very first wave so this is like march april 2020 uh, and not after that in fact uh, you know there was so much and after that uh, i think it was um, on uh, like you know 27th uh, finally you know the nationwide lockdown was declared by the center and because it was declared with a very short duration it was declared in the evening and uh, you know the, all the governments of the states were given around 4 and a half hours uh, you know for the migrant workers to move and you know it was to be implemented at a very short time period of time and uh, that led to uh, you know disputes between the delhi government and uh, the center government because uh, you know delhi was held at one point of time and it went in such a bad case that uh, you know the supreme court has to actually step down uh, step up and uh, you know the delhi government had to be told that you know you are handling the pandemic very poorly there was a lot of bickering between the center government and the delhi government during this time that we are talking from june 2020 there was also the issue that the center government wanted to lift the nation uh, you know the lockdown Uh, by july and the delhi government wanted the lockdown to continue so uh, the aap government in fact you know did announce uh, you know i'll just come to the next slide now from kerala yeah so uh, yes so the first case in fact kerala was the first state to uh, you know which reported a covid case on the 20, uh, 30th of january 2020 Now Kerala has been lauded as a successful a model of management of the disease and the flattening of the curve during the early stages of the first wave very early detection isolation and treatment combined with proactive response by the state government there were also a series of welfare measures like free food kits pension labor protection for migrant workers community kitchens which were de dedicated they were dedicated covid hospitals isolation wards and community participation in the management and in fact even the kerala government was lauded for its pandemic management but the numbers really peaked in both delhi as well as in kerala between april august 2020 to october 2020 the second wave uh, which came in may 2021 and continued the surge till october 2021 with daily case loads in kerala as high as 42000 in july 2021 uh, in delhi the cases were as high as 50000 at one point of time and uh, you know the, there were also assembly elections going on in kerala festivals and there was violation of protocols now there of course you know the covid cases the one witnesses a decrease since october 2021 kerala government was lauded for keeping the death toll low despite the high rates of infection however the controversy over the counting of the number of deaths in october 2021 and the revision of the cumulative death toll as 47794 in december 2021 uh, that, that is the district health uh, you know a uh, scheme of kerala there were these kind of issues which came up between the kerala government and the central government Uh, so because we are just going to focus on the social welfare schemes and the health schemes uh, this is a table from delhi and kerala and you will see that the schemes are pretty similar or at least you know there are some kind of same kind of okay uh, yeah sorry about that okay 
So the, the Delhi announced a free ration scheme. This was, in fact, uh, you know, just with the first COVID case, Delhi government had announced it. It also announced financial assistance to be given to cab drivers, to people who are who were losing jobs or who were affected by the lockdown. That is the daily wages, the migrant workers. Hunger relief centers uh, were opened all over Delhi, and the Delhi government said that there is no need for people even, you know, because you need a ration card. It's a card uh, in, uh, you know, in India, which you have to show to get, uh, you know, to uh, get the food distribution system, and, you know, you can get a daily meal or a monthly meal, depending on where you are staying. So the Delhi government also declared that even people without a ration card can go to the, you know, there were schools which were dedicated, and they could actually avail meal twice a day. Uh, there were also compensations announced by the Delhi government, specifically for health workers, because healthcare workers were the first workers to come in. And uh, it announced that anybody who died due to COVID, any employee of the Delhi government or a healthcare worker or the Anganwari workers uh, will be compensated. Uh, and you know, there was also a fight between what the compensation should be. But uh, it initially started with uh, 50 lakhs, and uh, then it changed to one crore. Uh, similarly, in Kerala, the Awas Health Insurance Scheme was started, and there were also camps for migrant workers, community kitchens started. Uh, these community kitchens, I'll just take uh, maybe half a minute to just talk about it. Uh, so these are known as the Kudambashri. It's, an, uh, you know, it's a government open program, and uh, they started uh, these community kitchens. In fact, uh, over uh, like you know a period of five days, nearly 1,100 community kitchens were started in Kerala. Very similarly, over a week in Delhi, around tw you know around uh, in about 27 schools, uh, you know around Delhi, the government uh, Delhi government schools, we started these uh, you know uh, food uh, you know hunger relief camps as well as hunger relief camps were there on the roadsides, so you know you uh, like so that people do not starve. And uh, Kerala government also announced the social welfare pension scheme for anybody, uh, you know, dying uh, due to COVID. There were, uh, you know, for Delhi and uh, Kerala, the health schemes. The Delhi is, uh, like, you know, the AAP government since 2014 is pretty well known to have invested and done remarkably well in the infrastructure of education and health. Uh, health was not so much, but education definitely. So the Delhi government had opened up the schemes which is known as the Mohalla clinics. Uh, Mohalla clinics are essentially like, you know, neighborhood clinics. Mohalla is a neighborhood, uh, but these really were ramped up, you know, for uh, once the COVID came up and uh, one could go and get free testing done to these centers. People who were not, uh, you know, who were not feeling well or who were, uh, you know, uh, who thought that they might have got COVID did not even have to step up, uh, step out of their homes. People could just, you know, they had apps and you can just call them and people would come and also give food. So, you know, all that kind of a thing was started, uh, you know, with the help of the Mahalla clinics. Uh, uh, Kerala, uh, no, I'll, I'll just go with the Delhi and then I'll come to Kerala. Uh, Delhi also started a Corona dashboard uh, much before the central government's COVID app was launched. Uh, the co a Corona dashboard actually was a dashboard uh, which had all the list of the hospitals where you can get a testing done about medicine availability, hospital beds availability, where do you need to call if you're all alone and unwell so that food can be delivered. And, uh, you know, so that was, uh, you know, a kind of an accounting, um, a kind of an audit accounting, also information and awareness about the COVID-19. Uh, they also had digital delivery of services, which I already said that if you need something you and you're all alone or you're, very, you're a senior person or you're just unwell, you could actually log on and or maybe give a call. And they would also call you every day, twice a day, to just know whether you are not feeling well or you need to be hospitalized and also giving you the oximeters. They were delivered uh, you know, outside your door uh, so that you, know, you don't have to uh, come out of your house. There was also COVID centers and vaccinations. Uh, you know, vaccination centers, of course, came much later in 2021. But COVID centers and COVID testing centers, in fact, in Delhi government, Mohalla clinics, as well as they also start in mobile clinics, uh, which were completely free of charge. Kerala, on the other hand, uh, started a, a COVID-19 audit again before the central government started the COVID app. They, were, uh, they also roped in private labs for uh, testing. 
they set up more beds for COVID patients, and this was all happening in March, April uh, of 2020. Uh, they started uh, you know, training and recruiting more healthcare workers, something which even the Delhi government did. And uh, I think a very important point for both Delhi and Kerala, where uh, you know, for Kerala, Kerala, uh, the chief minister minutes would be shared, and the chief minister would actually come on, uh, you know, on television as well as on radio to communicate with the people. Something very similar was also done by the chief minister of Delhi. I'm just, I'm just going. Okay. All right. Now I'll uh, come to uh, the intergovernmental relationships in Kerala and Delhi. Uh, and I think I'll just go very quickly because I just have very less time. So uh, the controversy over data management and privacy on COVID data uh, was an issue uh, between the central government and the Kerala government. A high level task force was sent to Kerala in August 2021 to assess the situation. The union health minister, in fact, lauded uh, Kerala's COVID management strategy and also responded uh, you know, with an emergency COVID response package, which was promised to Kerala, you know, to shoot up uh, the vaccination drive in August 2021. But there's a caveat here. I would like to say that this was a time when the Kerala government won the assembly elections. Uh, before that, there was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there were a lot of disputes between uh, both the governments. There was also at the same time criticism of the state's wider use of rapid antigen test and not the RT-PCR, which was recommended by the center. And the allegation that the state of Kerala had stopped sending daily COVID data to the center and the state's health uh, minister. Health Ministry. Okay, the Delhi Center IGR, uh, Delhi government reported uh, that the center provided funds around 17,000 crores to all the states, but not to Delhi. Uh, the criticism, there was a criticism against uh, the center, that, uh, by, the, by the center on uh, Delhi government that, uh, you know, the coupon scheme, that is, you know, to avail food, uh, was criticized by the center. The government of NCT Delhi, again, you know, th this is very important because uh, the act was passed in 2021, withdrawing the powers and reducing the powers of the elected government of Delhi to the lieutenant governor, uh, governor uh, nom nominated by the center. Uh, Wilfred have already said that Delhi is not a center, it's a union territory. The center also alleged Delhi government of fudging de death tally, and there were disputes over control of bureaucrats. Okay, so now I'll hand it over to Wilfred. Thank you. That's all right. All right. So, oh, yeah, so we'll conclude. First of all, uh, as you may remember, I, I um, refer to three assumptions. So the first of these assumptions is that it's not necessarily the case that the center is not uh, intervening less in areas that are under control of the state. In fact, given the nature of the pandemic, particularly during the first lockdown, there is heavy involvement and the activation of the National Disaster Management Act in the management of the health policy at the level of the states as well, in terms of procurement, test, trace, and so forth. But as some people have argued, and that already addresses the second point, that this involvement is not continuous over the life cycle of the pandemic. In fact, with regards to health intervention, the point has been made that from excessive centralization during the first lockdown, there was de facto unilateral decentralization going into the second lockdown, where the states were actually at that point asking for more assistance with regard to the supply of oxygen and also the procurement of vaccines, which had been started to roll out at that particular point. And then the third uh, assumption actually looks at the late nature of intergovernmental relations and the difference between center state and center Delhi relations. And there we also find confirmation that because of the intense party competition in Delhi and the fact that Delhi is a union territory, that this led to a much more adversarial intergovernmental relationship, despite the hiccups that also were mentioned in the relationship between the center and Kerala, but actually, after the elections in Kerala, the uh, BGP is even on record for applauding the way in which Kerala had dealt with the pandemic, whereas there is a continuous um, uh, 
conflictual relationship between the center and Delhi, which is partially also reflecting the kind of competition for policy ownership, issue ownership of what's going on in this territory and who can claim to kind of shape social policy and health policy uh, in this capital city. Okay, I leave it to that. Thank you. Thank you.